Welcome. In this video I'm going to talk about tracking airplanes with an RTL SDR software defined radio dongle and a Raspberry Pi. And I'll put a link in the description to the hardware I'm using and if you use that link it helps me out a little bit and doesn't cost you anything extra. So I have the antenna here that came with this kit and this is the configuration I have it in. And if you pry open this middle section here you can see one of the wires here is connected to the middle of this cable and the other is connected to the ground. So I have the ground here down and I have the other one up. And I'm using the short leads on here. So I'm not an expert at software defined radio or radio in general. So I'm mostly sharing my experience. So if you have any suggestions on this antenna, you know, drop a comment below and other people can read them. So you can get specialized antennas that will work better than this, but this seems to be working pretty good for me. So I orient it up and down. So the ground is down and the other one is up. If I can get that right. And then I have the dongle plugged in there, or hooked up to the coax. And then I have the Raspberry Pi. I have a micro SD card. I'll take that out. I'll be writing that image with my computer. And then I have a 2.2 amp power supply. So this is a Raspberry Pi 3B version 1.2. So this has Wi-Fi on it. You could also use a Raspberry Pi 4. I have one of those too, like that. But this runs pretty good on a Raspberry Pi 3. It's a good application for it. And if you were wanting to run this off a of battery, this might be the better option because it might take less energy. So when I have all this set up, I'll have this plugged in here. I'll have the power supply plugged in here. And that's the whole setup for the Raspberry Pi. So now I'm going to take my micro SD card, I'm going to put it in a reader and put it into my computer and I'll create the image. And I'll be doing this headless meaning I won't be using the screen on here. You could hook a screen and keyboard and mouse up to this and configure it that way too. So I'll jump over to my computer and we'll get started. Okay, so I'll put a link in the description to my website where I'll have these instructions here. So I'm going to move pretty quickly through installing the Raspberry Pi image on here, but I'll put a link in the description also to my Raspberry Pi playlist where you can find more detailed videos. So I'll go to the Raspberry Pi imager. I'll hit Choose OS. I'll hit Use Custom, and I've already downloaded the Raspberry Pi image light, the uh, Raspberry Pi OS Buster light. So I'll open that. I'll hit choose SD. I'll stick my micro SD card in. And we see my reader come up. I'll hit write. It'll ask for my password. I'll hit OK. And now it will write the image. OK, it has finished writing the image. So I'll hit continue here. I'll close this. So now I need to remove the micro SD card and I'll stick it back in. And it will mount the boot partition automatically. I'll open that up. And now I need to create two files here. I need to create one called ssh.txt or just ssh, either one, and then a wpa supplicant.conf. So I could use a text editor or you could use Notepad on Windows. I'll just use a terminal. So I don't have the instructions on my website on how to do this. You can watch it from my screen or just use whatever text editor you want. But here I'll just type touch space forward slash volumes forward slash boot forward slash SSH. And then I'll type nano space forward slash volumes forward slash boot forward slash. And I'll just copy this so I don't type it wrong. The WPA supplicant. I'll hit enter. Now I'm in the nano editor. And I'll copy this text in. And I'll go up here and change my country code. US and now my SSID and my password. I'll type control O to save, control X to exit. So now I can exit out of here. So now that I have those two files, I'll dismount the boot drive. I'll take the micro SD card, I'll plug it in the Raspberry Pi, and then I'll plug the power in on the Raspberry Pi. Okay, so that might take a minute to boot up. I'll go to a terminal in the meantime. So if that's a little confusing for you, you can use a full graphical version of Raspberry Pi and go in and connect to Wi-Fi in there and type everything in in there too. This is just the lightweight way of doing it. So in my terminal, I'll type SSH space and I'll type pi at, and I'll say raspberry pi dot local. I'll hit enter and it may not be done booting yet. Okay, it said connection refused, so we'll wait a minute. Okay, that came up. It says, do I want to continue? I'll say yes. I'll type in the password. So that'll be raspberry. I'll hit enter. And we're logged in. I'll type clear. 
Now I'll go to my instructions over here. So there are instructions on FlightAware's website. You can read through those. I have a kind of condensed version of that and I did things a little bit different. So the first instruction I have is update the package list and packages, but I'm going to go through and set up some settings for my localization. So I'll say sudo space raspy dash config. I'll hit enter. I'll go down to localization options. I'll change my locale. I'll scroll down to en underscore us. And then I'll scroll down to the UTF-8 version of that. I'll hit space to mark it. I'll hit tab to go to OK. The next screen I'll go down to ENUS UTF-8. I'll hit tab for OK. I'll go back down to localization options. I'll go to change time zone. I'll go here to America. I'll scroll down here. And here's Chicago. I'll do that. I'll say OK. Now I'll go back down to localization. I'll go to change keyboard layout, and that didn't seem to work, so I can come back and do that later. I can probably reboot and then it might work later. So I'll go to finish, I'll hit enter, clear my screen. So the first thing I want to do here is update the package list, so I'll copy this first line. I'll paste it in here. So what this is doing is it's downloading the package list here, the first part. This is upgrading the packages, and then this is removing some packages it doesn't need anymore. Okay, so that's completed. Next, I'll go to Raspy Config again, and I'll change the host name. And this is optional, but I like to do it. So right now it's Raspberry Pi. I like to just change it to PiAware. I'll hit OK. I'll go to Finish. It says, do you want to reboot now? I'll say no. I'll reboot later. So I logged into this using pi at raspberrypi.local. And if you're using a modern version of Mac, Windows, or Linux, you can do that. Otherwise, you can find out the IP address of it. And to do that, you can plug a monitor into it with a keyboard and mouse, log into it, and then type IP space dash A, and then you can get the IP address. But now next time I log in after I reboot, I'll log into pi at piaware.local. So next I'll download the piaware repository. So I'll copy this next line. That's very fast. I'll install the repository. There we go. I'll update the package list. So we've already done this when we updated the system, but we're doing it again because we added a repository. And then next I'll run install PiAware and dump 1090FA. So this will install the two packages. I'll say I want to continue, yes. So there's two options down here you can set up. It says enable automatic and manual updates. So you could just run these two commands. I'm not going to do that in this video, but you're certainly welcome to. And it's probably a good idea if you're going to be running this long term. Okay, so that's finished. I want to reboot. I'll type sudo space system ctl reboot. I'll hit enter. If I go back to my instructions here, it says open the PiAware web interface. So this is using that new host name. If you're using an IP address, you would want to use that here instead. So I'll hit enter here. It looks like it's up already, so that was pretty quick. Let me refresh just to make sure I have a new image. So it looks like this is in Italy, maybe. So I'll drag this map over to the US where I'm at. I'll scroll out. And I'm right here. So this isn't really working right now, and there's a reason. It's because I'm in my basement. So the nice thing about the Raspberry Pi is I can go relocate this somewhere else and get a much better signal. So it looks like I got one plane here. Let's see if we can find it. Yeah, I'm not sure where it's at. Okay, so I'll go back to my terminal. This time I'll log in with PiAware. So I'll type ssh space pi at PiAware dot local. I'll hit enter. 
I'll say yes. I'll type in my password. And I'm back in. So when you shut this down, you'll want to run the shutdown command. So type sudo space system ctl power off. I'll hit enter. And now this will power down. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this, I'll unplug it, I'll go upstairs, plug it in where it has a better signal. And ideally you would actually even do it outside or you know somewhere out in the open. And we'll see that we get a lot more airplanes that way. Okay, so I have that plugged in. I'll see if it's booted yet. Looks like it is. So the way this PyOR works is it gathers information from the ADS-B receiver on frequency 1090 and it displays it on a map. And it's part of this FlightAware system. So when you have this running, it actually is uploading information to FlightAware. And that's why this looks so good is that FlightAware is a business and they collect this data and display it for people. And they have this nice system set up to do that. So now we're getting a ton of airplanes. This is actually probably the most I've ever gotten on here. So I have them. I'm in central Iowa here. I'm having them. This is all the way down almost to Missouri. And you can click on these. And you can see information about it. You can visit the flight page. You can see everything about the flight. Sometimes they'll have pictures of the airplane. I don't know if this is the exact picture or representation of one, probably a representation. It tells the whole flight plan. It shows where it's going. And then on this page here, we can show all tracks. Let's see if I have tracks turned on. You can go to the gear here and you can turn on different things. You can turn on next red weather, that's kind of cool. Um, selected air trail, positions, all aircraft trails. Uh, it doesn't show them, it's starting to show them, but if I click on it, I think it'll show it. Yeah, you can see there's a little one there. My airport near me is right here. So I'll often see planes uh, flying into here, and when they get too low, I'll lose the signal. So it would be best to have this outside and up high, but I just have this upstairs sitting on a desk inside. So even then, it's working decent. And we have quite a few airplanes here. So here's one, this is the UPS. You can see ground speed, you can see all this information on it, the altitude, close this here. Okay, so you can see the trail here while it's going. Scroll out again. This one's almost in the state below me. So yeah, it's pretty amazing how well this works. So I think this is a neat project if you have a Raspberry Pi and an SDR dongle. It's pretty cool when you hear a plane flying overhead, you can go on here and see what it is. You could even dedicate hardware to this and leave it running all the time. And I think FlightAware will give you a plan on their system for free if you update data all the time. I'm not sure exactly how that works, but you could check that out on their website. Is this a link? Yeah, this is a link to it. So that'll take you to FlightAware and you can read all about them. So now when I'm done with this, I want to go into the terminal and shut it down, or you can hook a keyboard mouse up to it and shut it down that way. So that's all for this video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. If you like this video, please click like. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'd appreciate if you could do that. And thanks for watching. Until next time, goodbye.